Did anybody stay up on New Year's Eve? Anyone stay up really late? Did anyone stay up all the way till midnight? Wow, some of the little ones have. Did anyone of the older ones not stay up till midnight? Because they're just past that now. Yeah, a few people. <laughs> Um, New Year's Eve is a night where you don't normally sleep as much as you might on another night. It's quite a sleepless night, isn't it, New Year's Eve? Um, but at least it's sleepless because you're celebrating something and you're having a party. Um, sometimes you might have a sleepless night for different reasons. So have you ever had a night where it's a normal night, maybe you've got school or work the next day, but you just can't get to sleep? Have you ever had a night like that? Maybe it's because you were worried about something that's going to happen the next day. Or maybe you were scared of something going on outside. Or maybe you had a bad dream in the middle of the night and it woke you up and you couldn't get back to sleep. Has anyone ever had something like that where they couldn't get to sleep? Lots of us. Um, I hate those kind of sleepless nights. Why don't you turn to the person next to you? What worries keep you up at night? What things make you not go to sleep at night because you're too worried? Okie dokie. Well, our story today, our story today happened more than two and a half thousand years ago in a massive kingdom, way bigger than England, a massive kingdom called Babylon. And I want you to come with me. We're going to go back in time, all the way to Babylon, and it's night time. And what we're going to do is we're just going to float, just fly. Everyone practice flying, with just with little wings, little quiet wings. We're going to just fly into someone's bedroom window at night. A bit like Santa. He doesn't fly in the window. He goes down the chimney and back up to the stocking. But imagine we're just going through the bedroom window. And inside, in the bed, our story starts with a man called Nebuchadnezzar. It's a bit of a crazy name. And he has a bad dream. Or he's a dream. And he can't get back to sleep. Um, uh, And there it is on the screen. We're going to have it behind us. uh, Or in your your, uh, Bibles in verse 1 of chapter 2. In the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His mind was troubled and he could not sleep. So maybe Nebuchadnezzar tried counting sheep to get back to sleep. Maybe he tried some breathing techniques or or, or maybe he read a bit of his favourite story. But nothing worked. He just won't get to sleep until he finds out what the dream means. That's what he's keeping him up. He's like, what does this dream mean? And in verse 2, if you have a look, he summoned the magicians and the enchanters and the sorcerers and the astrologers to tell him what he had dreamed. And when they came in and stood before him, he said to them, I have had a dream that troubles me and I want to know what it means. Now, there's something I haven't mentioned about Nebuchadnezzar. You might have spotted it already or worked it out or maybe you knew already. When I can't sleep, I can't summon magicians and enchanters and sorcerers and astrologers for help. I can't summon people to to come to help me in the middle of the night. Some of you might be able to summon your parents, but most of us can't even do that anymore. But Nebuchadnezzar happens to be the most powerful man in the world. Look at verse 4. Then the astrologers answered the king in Aramaic. And they said, may the king live forever. Nebuchadnezzar is not just an ordinary person. He's the king, and not only the king, he's the king of Babylon, this massive, powerful empire. Other kings bow to Nebuchadnezzar as their king. He's like a king of kings. And in verse 4, the astrologers, they come to him, because of course they do, if the king summons you, you have to go to him. And they say, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, tell us what you dreamt, and we will tell you what it means. And if you go to Rome, who's ever, has anyone here ever been to Rome? 
If you go to Rome, you can see the Colosseum, and it's a giant arena. It's like an old, ancient football stadium. But it wasn't for football. Does anyone know what used to happen in the Colosseum? Yeah, Edward. People used to fight other people. Apparently, they used to flood it and have naval battles as well. Did you know this? Crazy. And um, people used to fight in it, and the emperor would often go, and he would sit in the in the stands, and he would watch. And if you were beaten in a fight, let's say Edward just had a fight with Jemima, and who would have won? Jemima. <laughs> let's say Edward was beaten in the fight. The emperor would hold out his hand like this with his thumb, and he would do one of two things. Either he would do this. What does this mean? If the emperor does this to Edward, what's going to happen, Edward? Huh? You're doing well? Uh, you're not, because you've been beaten. But someone else said it somewhere else. If he did this, it means that you, you are allowed to live. You got beaten, but it's fine. You're allowed to live and fight another day. So Jemima wouldn't execute you there in the middle of the Colosseum. Um, but if he did this, what would happen? Jemima would have to chop off Edward's head. It's a bit grim, isn't it? They were grim, the Romans. Have you ever seen horrible histories with the Romans? Oh, terrible people. Um, so, if he did this, you'd be allowed to live. But if he did this, you would, uh, you would be put to death. Think of the power of the Roman emperor sitting there with just his thumb. That's all it takes. A tiny movement with his thumb like that. He had the power to make you and let you live or break you and have you killed. And Nebuchadnezzar is just as powerful. He says to the astrologers, do what I say, and I'll make you. I'll give you loads of stuff, all the stuff you want. But if you don't do what I say, I'm going to break you. Have a look at verse 5. The king replied to the astrologers, This is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me what my dream was and interpret it, I will have you cut to pieces and your houses turned into piles of rubble. But if you tell me the dream and explain it, you will receive from me gifts and rewards and great honour. And I love the last bit of verse 6 there, as if the astrologers were umming and ahhing about what, what they should try and do. So tell me the dream and interpret it for me. Well, yeah, obviously. Obviously, they should just tell Nebuchadnezzar the dream and interpret it for him, and then they won't die. They'll be allowed to live. That'll be great. There's just one problem with that. The problem is they can't. They can't do it. Of course they can't. It's impossible. Imagine if I said, tell me what I dreamt last night. Let's try it. Isabel. Tell me what I dreamt last night. What I dreamed last night. Go on. Go on, tell me. Have a guess. Too long, your house is a pile of rubble. Well, let's see who else. Jojo, what did I dream last night? No. House is a pile of rubble. Anyone else want to have a go? Anyone else want to? Deanne Tom, what did I dream last night? No. Good guess, but no, your house is a pile of rubble. I do that during the daytime. Anyone else want to have a one last guess? What did I dream last night? Daisy, what did I dream last night? No, yeah, well, house is a pile of rubble. It's impossible. Look at what they say in verse 7. They say, why don't you tell us your dream, and then we'll be very happy to tell you what it means. Otherwise, it's impossible. And in verse 10, they say that themselves. There is not a man on earth who can do what the king asks. No king, however great and mighty, has ever asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or sorcerer or astrologer. What the king asks is too difficult. And in verse 12, this is the sort of person that Nebuchadnezzar was. Verse 12, this made the king so angry and furious that he ordered the execution of all the wise men of Babylon. There are some things that you just don't know. And there are some things that you just can't know. You can do all the scientific research in the world get all of your test tubes out and do all the maths and read all of the books and you still won't be able to find it out. And that's what the wise men found when they were asked to interpret Nebuchadnezzar's dream and they couldn't read his mind. We're only human and our wisdom and our power has limits, doesn't it? So your parents or your teachers at school or the prime minister of the country, they don't know everything. And you could literally be one of the wisest, most clever people in Babylon with your neck on the line and you still won't know all the answers. 
Now, does that worry you? Does that make you worried? Does it worry you that you don't know what's going to happen in this new year? It even worried the king of Babylon. It's funny, isn't it, how Nebuchadnezzar, who can summon the wisest men in the middle of the night, he has the power to make you or break you, but he still can't get to sleep because there are some things that even he doesn't know. Well, this is probably a good time to leave Nebuchadnezzar's room because he's losing his tempo. We don't want to be there when that happens. Uh, so let's practice our flying again. We're going to fly back out of his window. And instead, we're going to find the room of one of those wise men of Babylon. So it's the next evening now, so it's still night time. And wise men all over Babylon, they're all having a sleepless night. They're worrying, they're crying, they're despairing, I imagine, because of Nebuchadnezzar's order to execute all of them. But we're going to fly in another window. And as we fly in, we're going to find one wise man called Daniel. And he's there with his friends. And they're having a sleepless night as well. But Daniel's not crying or worrying or despairing. Actually, him and his friends are cheering and celebrating, almost like it's New Year's Eve. Look at what they're singing in verse 20. We're jumping ahead a bit. Look at verse 20. It's the bit where the the lines go all wiggly down the side. Can you see that? They're singing, praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He sets up kings and deposes them. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. You see, when Daniel found out about the king's order to execute all the wise men, he had gone to Nebuchadnezzar and he said, can you give us more time and I'll see what I can do. And he prayed to God that God would reveal the dream to him. Because while we don't know lots of things, God knows everything, doesn't he? And God did show Daniel the dream. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel. And I'm not going to tell you what the dream was. And I'm not going to tell you what it means. You can read that for yourselves later on if you like. It's all in Daniel 2. Um, Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to spend some more time praying together using the words of Daniel's song because that will help us if we're worried or sleepless about the year to come or the day to come. So we're going to do this a a, a different way. Um, I'm going to read some of the lines um, from Daniel's prayer, um, uh, and we're going to come up with actions to help us remember them for the next time we're feeling sleepless. So they're on the uh, the, the board there. The first line we're going to do is, wisdom and power are his. Why don't you in twos and threes or in little family groups um, can you come up with some actions to do to remember wisdom and power are his and his means God's if you can do that. I'll give you 45 seconds. So I'm feeling strict. Okie dokie, what have we got? Does anyone want to volunteer their actions up? Clara, what did you guys do? Wisdom and power are his. I think that's really good. Nice one. Let's adopt that then for our actions to help us remember. So wisdom and power are his. Let me pray. Dear God, help us to remember that we don't know everything. When we remember that, help us not to worry, but trust in you instead. You know what will happen this year, even if we don't. And you have the power uh, to, 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 to put your will into practice and to put your will into play, even though we don't. Wisdom and power are yours, Lord. Amen. Okay, the next one is... Uh, We'll go with the one that's on the board. He deposes kings and raises up others. Deposes just means he, he like, get rid of them or take them down. 
will stop them from being a king, and he raises up uh, uh, he raises up others means he'll put other kings in place. So in twos and threes, can you think of any actions for he deposes kings and raises up others? And the he is God again. Okie dokie. Does anyone want to volunteer their actions for everyone to use? Have you got any volunteers? None at all. Uh, Richard and Jenny and John, what did you guys do? Are oh, you just laughed a lot. <laughs> nice. Let's go. Well, we should give John a round of applause because we gave Clara one as well. So let's adopt that. So we're going to take the crown off our head uh, and maybe we're going to put it on our own or the person next to us, someone else's. Um, that's how we're going to remember he sets up, uh, he deposes kings and raises up others. Um, let's pray again. Dear God, when we are afraid of people, whether it's cruel kings like Nebuchadnezzar or corrupt politicians or strict teachers or power hungry bosses or scary examiners, or just even what other people like our friends think about us, when we're scared about those things, help us to remember that you are the only one who can make or break us. Not them. Help us to fear you and only you, Lord. Lord, we pray that you'll forgive us of our sin because that breaks us. And we thank you for sending Jesus because he makes us. And once we're made in Christ, we have no need to fear that anything or anyone will break us this year or any other year. Because you, Lord, depose kings and raise up others. Amen. Okay, the next one we're going to pick is, he reveals deep and hidden things. So God reveals deep and hidden things in your twos and threes. Another 45 seconds. Can you think of some actions for that one? Okie dokie. Have we got any any volunteers for this one? Edward, what did, what did you guys come up with? Reveals. So he reveals deep and hidden things. Okay, everyone try that. He reveals, oh yes, round of applause. God reveals deep and hidden things. Have I got that right? Why don't we pray? I find this particularly encouraging, and I also think this might be a good thing to remember and pray about before we read the Bible, because God can reveal deep and hidden things in the Bible, um, but he can also reveal other things as well. Let's pray about that. Dear God, help us to remember that we can't always find out everything. There are some things that are too big for us to understand. But thank you that you show us what we need to know. Thank you that you show us about yourself. And please continue to show yourself to us this year. You reveal deep and hidden things. Amen. We're going to do one last one, and that last one is light dwells with him. So another 45 seconds in your twos and threes or your groups. Light dwells with God.
would you guys be happy to play it again? The Shepherd song. If we do Oh Ancient of Days in a bit and then just go straight into the Shepherd song. Does that work? Uh, could be fun for them to have a go at singing it. What do you think? It's really, it's a really short service. Should we have a go? And they didn't sing the other one, I suppose. Thanks. Okay, what actions did we get for that one? Anyone want to share their actions? Yes, Sarah. The YMCA. Go on. Then. Light dwells with, with with him. Okay, we're just going to do the YMCA for that one. That's easy to remember. Light dwells. I don't really get with, but there we go. Him. Um, let's pray about that. Ready? Dear God, when we are sleepless at night, when we are worried about what we do not know, when we are troubled by the things that are in darkness to us, thank you that light dwells in you. Let that light shine, Lord, so that we might be sleepless in praising you. Light dwells with you. Amen. Let's see if we can remember all of them. So anyone remember Clara's actions from the beginning? What were they? Wisdom. And power are his. Um, he deposes kings and raises up others. He reveals deep and hidden things. And light dwells with him. <laughs> Next time, maybe you can try doing running through that again tonight before you go to bed, just in case that you're going to find it hard to sleep. And next time you wake up in the middle of the night, whoever you are, however old you are, why don't you try and run through those actions and remember this song from Daniel 2. If you can't remember it, you can open your Bible and look at it again. And then try and pray those things again uh, and see uh, if that helps you. Um, Daniel sang because wisdom belongs to God and because God shares his wisdom. And we could spend hours thinking about God's wisdom but we'll never get to sleep if we did that. So um, I'm going to finish with the words of 1 Corinthians 1, verse 30. Um, and you guys can talk more about it over coffee if you would like. Um, they'll be up on the screen. It is because of God that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. 